Good morning. Let's start. Let's, I know you're just anxious to study some combinatorics, so let's get going on it. Now, this is a simple example, and, and, and I'll comment about the argument and just how important it is, but that what we want to do is use math induction to prove this inequality that n squared is bigger than 5n plus 13. Now, I chose this one for several reasons, but one reason is that it's false when n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But it's, the idea is that it's true from some point on. And in this case, it's supposed to be true from 7 on. So if we just took this and said, All right, let's do it, let's do it, then we would start with the base case. So we're going to attempt to solve it. So we check, is the statement true for the base case of n equals 7? Well, we substitute in n equals 7. On the left-hand side, we get 7 squared. That's 49. We substitute in n equals 7. On the right-hand side, we get 5 times 7 plus 13, which is 35 plus 13, which is 48. 49 is bigger than 48, so the inequality holds. So the base step is done. Agreed? Now we move on to the inductive step. So... Let's work through this together. We are assuming that k squared is bigger than 5k plus 13 for some k, which is at least 7. Then we try to show that the inequality holds for the next integer, k plus 1. So substitute in k plus 1 on the left-hand side and get k plus 1 squared. Well, working that out, that's just k squared plus 2k plus 1. And now right there, we use the inductive hypothesis, and we replace the k squared term by 5k plus 13. So we get the inequality 5k plus 13 plus the remaining 2k plus 1. Now, the third line in that expression is just a rearrangement of the constants. So 5k plus 5, I've got, 13, I've got 8 left over. I put the 8 over with the, with the 1 to get 9. Now, what is it that I'm trying to show? I'm trying to show that the inequality is valid when n is k plus 1. So I'm trying to show that k plus 1 squared is bigger than 5 times k plus 1. But that's not what I have. I have 5k plus 5 plus 2k plus 9, and I want 5k plus 5 plus 13. So, so what I need is I need the inequality 2k plus 9 is greater than or equal to 13. If it's true, then I'm done. All right, so I pause and say, is it done? Is it true? All right, now, this, this example is a little bit artificial, and many of you are saying, well, of course that's true. But if we were going to be super student and write things in the absolute 100% crystal clear manner, we would start over. And we would first do a preliminary exercise. And the preliminary exercise would be to compare the quantity 2n plus 9 with the quantity 13. And the exercise would be to show that 2n plus 9 is at least 13 when n is at least 2. All right, now what's the proof? The proof is 8th uh, grade algebra. If n is at least 2, then 2n is at least 4. And adding 9 to both sides, 2n plus 9 is greater than or equal to 4 plus 9, which is 13. Okay, so it's true, the inequality we want is true whenever n is at least 2. Now we return to the exercise that we were originally assigned, and we attempt to prove that n squared is bigger than 5n plus 13 when n is greater than or equal to 7. So I write down again the base step, check, that's good. Now I do the inductive step. K is, I assume k squared is bigger than 5k plus 13, for some k greater than 7, and I'm doing the same algebra as I had on the preceding page. But when I get to the next to the last line, and I have the 5k plus 5 plus 2k plus 9, now I use that exercise and replace the 2k plus 9 by 13. And k is at least 7, so it's at least 2. And that substitution works. All right, now, admittedly, this is a little bit artificial. This is not the most challenging mental uh, 
exercise in, in the world. But, but you see how in more complicated examples, you're, you're trying to do something, and you run into a roadblock. And you say, I, I don't know how to go forward. I, I need something. So you stop that project, put it down, go over here and pick up this other project, which is only intended to get around this roadblock. And then once you figure out how to do that, then you return to the original project and you start again from scratch. Now, somebody else comes along and reads your work and they say, wow, how did you know? How could you be so clever as to know that you needed this little result? And then you just smile and say, well, it, it, it helps if you worked at it for several hours. That the experience and the effort and, and the failures are what taught you. And now, at the end, you write down this really clever solution. But it wasn't so clever. It was the, it was the product of, of hard work. All right. Now, this, this was not all that hard. But that exercise came from the failure. That's where it came from. OK. Now, let's, do, uh, let's admit that calculus has its uh, strengths. A much stronger result can be obtained just using basic techniques from calculus. Because it's not that n squared is smaller than 5n plus 13 when n is at least 7. It's going to be eventually much smaller. So using our big O and little o notation, what we want to show is that n squared is little o of 5n plus 13. That means if you take the ratio of 5n plus 13 over n squared, it goes to 0. Now, thinking back to calculus, what does it mean for a ratio to go to 0? That means for every epsilon that's positive, you can make the ratio less than epsilon. So that's my proof. My proof is I say, let epsilon be any positive number. Doesn't matter how small epsilon is. Then I take n0 to be the least positive integer that satisfies two inequalities. n0 has to be at least 10 over epsilon. Now, that's some number. 10 over epsilon is a number. I need a positive integer that's bigger than that. Round it up. If, it's an even, if it works out to be a, an integer exactly, add 1 to it. I also need n0 squared to be bigger than 26 over epsilon. 26 over epsilon is something. That just means that the square of n0 has to be at least some bound. There's obviously an integer that satisfies that. Take the least one. And now, whenever n is at least n0, then we can write this inequality. 5n plus 13 over n squared. Now, split that into 2. 5n over n squared, which is 5 over n. And 13 over n squared. The 5 over n is less than epsilon over 2 by the inequality. And the 13 over n squared is less than epsilon over 2. So add them together is less than epsilon. And that's the kind of work you would have done in first semester calculus. If you'd had me for a professor, if, if you had somebody else, you, you might not have done epsilons and deltas, but you should have. Okay. So this is an epsilon delta type of proof in two lines of this inequality. And it shows that n squared is little o of 5n plus 13. It's not only smaller, it's much smaller. It's, but again, what, what, what is the point here? We start with an inequality, which is just false for n equals 1 to 6. And then once you get to 7, the inequality becomes true. But then much more is true. It, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. The n squared is, is and back, by the way, I, I must apologize to you. Uh, the statement is written backwards. Uh, the, so we're going to have to edit this tape. Sorry about that, Mr. Engineer. That line is written backwards. 
Five, I mean, you're listening to me and you're all substituting the correct thing. The 5n plus 13 is little o of n squared. And the, uh, the ratio, you see the way I wrote the ratio? The ratio is, the argument is correct. The statement at the top is wrong. It should be 5n plus 13 is little o n squared. Okay. So I, I apologize for that. I'll have to fix that and we'll have to edit all kinds of things. But that's, that's uh, too bad. All right. Is the, is the slide clear with what the statement actually is? The proof is fine. The statement is wrong. 